Hey everyone, this is Brooks Popwell from Pure Life Ministries. You're about to hear part of our bi-weekly podcast, Purity for Life. Hope you enjoy. Kathy Gallagher is the co-founder of Pure Life Ministries. 30 years ago, it was the struggle that she faced along with her husband, Steve, as he dealt with his own sexual addiction, which started her ministry to women. And now she tackles some questions to help and encourage other hurting wives who are wondering what to do next as they face their husband's sin. Kathy, for those who don't know, can you just briefly share how you got into this ministry with your husband, Steve, and really how you both came to the place of starting Pure Life Ministries to begin with? Uh, We started Pure Life Ministries because, um, while our lives had fallen apart because of sexual sin, Steve was out of control, terribly addicted to pornography um, and illicit sex with other people. And I finally got to the place where I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I filed for divorce. And through a series of events and um, things that the Lord took us through, I realized that that was not the path that God had called me to, that I was to stay and work through it. And Steve went through a tremendous, tremendous repentance. Um, and eventually I did too. And God just started working in both of us. It was all, it was as a couple, but it was also very individual. And he just did things in both of us that were very powerful. And God put a burden on Steve's heart um, to reach out to other people. Because back then, in the early 80s, no one talked about sexual sin. It wasn't. It, it was not being talked about. And when we first started going through all this and working through it, we felt like we were the only people on the planet that were going through this. And we started to realize, no, there are a lot of other people out there going through the same thing. But because it's not being talked about or dealt with, um, they they were suffering in secret also. So. Steve felt like he needed to start a support group, and we were going to a very large church in Sacramento, and the pastors got on board with them to have the support group, and so guys started coming, and I started having ladies come to my house, and I was having um, a support group for wives, and that's how we started, was in our living room and at the church, and then it expanded from there, and Steve wrote a book, and he started preaching and teaching, and, and that's where we started. That's how it started. So I know after all these years later and the counseling that you've done, you've come to see how hard it can be for a wife when she and her husband are deciding whether he should come here to Pure Life to get help through the residential program. Um, But I know you've also come to believe and be convinced, really, that a wife should be willing to do whatever it takes to make sure her husband is able to go through that program. So why is it? What makes it so effective? Well, the reason that I am pretty strong about it is because I live here and I've watched the Lord work um, in many, many lives. And it's a powerful, powerful place. The residential program is effective because the Lord's here. We don't, we're not offering band-aids or gimmicks or um, anything like that. We have the presence of God here and it's powerful what he's doing in the lives of these men. And there's an atmosphere that is saturated by the Lord's presence and nearness. And God isn't an add-on. He's not like something that we've tacked on to some other neat things that people can latch on to for help. He is the answer. Um, and so we're training these men, discipling these men um, to develop a real walk with God. And so that's, I mean, I'm, it's hard to say everything about this, the residential program, why it's effective. That is the main reason it's effective is because the power and presence of God is here to change lives for those who want that. You know, that both those things you mentioned, I know that's your conviction about God's presence and a walk with God mm-hmm. being just at the core of everything that somebody needs. But I, I'm i thinking of how I was before I came to the program, and, you know, I grew up in the church. So the idea of, oh, I walk with God and, you know, God's presence, I well, you know, I go to church. It's That's where God is, you know. How could you maybe convey to someone who— 
that this isn't just a concept. This is something that they may never have experienced before, that, uh, but that it's a very real thing and that, that when somebody is really entering into a walk with God and really is, is around the presence of God in a real way, that they'll know that and that that will very well may be something that you know changes their life forever because it's different from anything that they've known before. Well, let me let me kind of scroll back a little bit and just say something about <laughs> the difficulty of someone coming into the residential program. By the time a couple are even having the discussion about a husband coming into the residential program, things have gotten pretty bad. Um, you don't just all of a sudden, you know, your husband has a little bit of a pornography problem and you guys are sitting down talking about sending him away for nine months. People don't do that. So what's happened is it's become severe. And in a lot of cases, it's the wife is ready to end it. So the, this, the, the sexual addiction aspect of life for a couple, it, it's a game changer. It changes everything about their lives. And women do not know what to do with this. So if a husband is cycling in and out of sin all the time and you know, she catches him again and he promises I'll never do it again. And she's believing him and they go back and forth, back and forth. And she's to the point now where something has to change because I can't live like this. That's where she's at. And she needs something as much as he does for different reasons, but they're both desperate. Um, in the church, a lot of the reason why people are not um, being victorious in their Christian life is because so much of what is being taught is that you can have your best life now and walk with Jesus. And it's just those two things are so incompatible. So God will oftentimes allow, well, I, you know, it's that's that's a whole nother issue, and I don't want to touch on that too much here. But God does allow trials to come into our lives on purpose to get us to start looking at things more deeply. And nothing will do it quicker and more effectively than sexual sin. So coming here, or the discussion to come here, we're assuming it's severe in their marriages. So next, let's talk about again, us addressing wives here mm -hmm. as they're thinking about this as a possibility for the immediate future. I mean, there's fears, there's yeah. there's risks, there's things like that that wives just have to face and deal with when they're grappling with this decision. So what are some of the difficulties you found wives have to think about in this decision-making process? Well, it's, yeah, there's there are a lot of issues. And I think one of the main things, or maybe not main, but it's definitely mixed in there is, you know, again, I said earlier, by the time they've sat down to have this discussion, things are pretty bad. So, and a lot of times for the wife, as well as for the husband, they feel like this is the end of the road. So that's scary. That's a very scary thing. And so the way things are at home now are unbearable, but at least you ha you're together. And this might be the thing that pushes it over the edge. And I know that that's a fear for a lot of women. They're afraid that um, it's not going to work. That's, that's the thing that, you know, he's going to go away for nine months. I'm left here with the kids, the money, the whole, that whole thing, that total insecurity of him being gone for so long. And then he comes back and he's not changed. That's a huge, that that's big. And it's real. It's a real concern because we we don't send people out with guarantees nobody can do that obviously it really does um depend on the heart of this man and what the wife knows of him now it's again i, I don't like making general statements because it's different for everybody every person is different um she has known him to be um a deceiver he's been yeah, he's been a deceiver. He has lied. Um, he has snuck around in many cases. Um, so she don't, she won't know 
when he comes back, if he's just the same old guy with a different cloak on, or is he the real deal? So there's just so many questions, you know. Some men, uh, some couples are close. They're in love with each other, but this thing has got to be dealt with. She believes in him. She wants him to make it. He wants to make it. So, but there's still the the other fears are, what am I going to do while well, he's gone for nine months? He's a breadwinner, and he's not going to make enough money to pay for this program and send money home to the family. That's a big fear. Another big fear is raising kids by themselves. How am I going to do this alone? I've got three little kids, and how am I going to do this by myself? So, and there's a myriad of other issues. Loneliness, you know, what is she going to do about her loneliness? And um, so the wives have a lot to deal with. Now, there's two different kinds of wives. There's wives who cannot wait for him to get out and go to that program, and there's wives who are dreading it. And so to speak to both of those, the wife who wants him gone, um, I get that. I totally get that because you're tired. You're just, you're tired and you're fed up and something needs to happen. I don't want a divorce, but this is it. This is the end of the road. And to be honest with you, I remember when I, Steve and I were going through our stuff, I, I was a revolving door. I was going through a revolving door about once a month. I would leave him because I could not handle, um, the fear, the constant line, the, just the deception that it, and just the fact that he wanted to be with other people. It was like, I could not handle it. So I would leave him. And the separations were like many uh, reprieves from the intensity of what I was going through. Um, So a wife who is in that place is looking forward to a nine month reprieve and just hoping almost against hope that something will happen for him and they can get restored. For the wife um, who is dreading him coming, for all the other reasons I mentioned earlier, the finances, the kids, and the whole thing, um, she will find that God is going to do something for her too. That's really interesting that you mentioned these two kinds of women and how they're looking at this time of separation from their husband in a different way. So regardless of which of these two categories a wife finds herself in, what would you say would be one of the basic needs that wives in this situation just face? One of the things that women, whether she wants him to go, whether she doesn't want him to go, what both wives desperately need is a lot more faith and a lot more trust in the Lord. And um, having your husband leave, helps that a lot because you don't have anybody else. You have to depend on the Lord. And that's one of the things about it, as painful as it is, that's one of the beautiful things that comes out of him leaving. You you have to get your eyes off of him. You have to. He's not there anymore. And you're not living, looking over your shoulder, wondering where he's at. He's here. And you're there. And Some women have to go through a period of maybe a month of just grappling with and getting adjusted to being there by yourself. But I, if your heart is in the right place, what's going to happen is your faith is going to, it's going to grow and you're going to learn to trust the Lord and you're going to learn to cry out to the Lord in faith, not in desperation. And well, yeah, desperation, not in despair. Um, So it's, it's a, it's a rough thing to deal with, but it's a blessed thing. And even if, and now this is a, this is probably not the best thing to say, but I want to put it out there for wives. Even if he doesn't change, even if he comes home and he's the same guy, my prayer for you is that you will have changed, that your whole world is not wrapped up in a man, but your whole world is wrapped up in God. God will give you the grace He has the power for you to go through anything. So, you know, I just feel like it's a very huge thing. It's almost like the wife is going through her own program um, while he's away. So it's it's important to um, stress the the value of what's going to happen for her. 
while her husband's away because God is going to work in her life. He is going to work in your life. He is going to do things in you. It's this event in your life that's going to cause you to come closer to Christ than you've ever been before. And it's, it's powerful. I am so grateful, and I have been so grateful for decades now for what I went through with Stephen. I remember I, the feelings and the, all the stuff that I went through is not far from me. It's not like it's a, in the distant past. I, yeah, I have a great marriage. I have a great husband and all that, but I have not forgotten what it was like. But I'll tell you, there, I don't have any regrets because what God did for me Going through that, going through that fiery, fiery trial was what brought me to Christ in a very real way. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I would go through it all again to have what I have now. Kathy, that's really precious in the truest sense of the word. I'm not going to try to add to it except to say, it's funny, you mentioned this time being, in a sense, a program for the wives. Now, we do have a wives program, and I know you are integrally involved with that. So just mention what that's about for wives who who want this kind of experience while their husbands are away but may not know what that looks like. The wives program is a 12-week long telephone. We call it counseling, but I kind of like to call it more of a discipleship mentoring sort of um at least that's what it's like for me when I'm counseling my ladies um it really is um such a blessing for so many women because for one thing you get to talk to somebody who's been where you're at all these women all these counselors have been in your shoes they know what it's like and what you're going through and there's a lot of wisdom in these women and all of them Um, are, you know, shining examples of how to go through. They all have gone through it. Um, And again, even though it's a telephone counseling program, between the homework and that phone call and your devotion to Jesus every morning in prayer and in the Word, it just is powerful. It's a very, it can be. Some women... um, don't get the full benefit because they um, try to cram too much stuff into their day. They don't get up early enough to have a meaningful time with the Lord. So that is going to be a hindrance. This time for you, this 12 weeks, is a set-apart time for you to spend with Jesus. And I really encourage my ladies to think of it that way. This time is for you. It's like a spiritual retreat, even though it's 12 weeks and it revolves around having a prayer time and you're doing homework and it's because your husband has done all this terrible stuff to you. It is still, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a time for you to, to really connect with the Lord and to talk to somebody who's been through it. And all these ladies, all these counselors are godly women who have learned how to go through this the right way. There's a right way and a wrong way to go through infidelity. And all these women have learned how to do it the right way and do it biblically. So you're going to get a lot of encouragement. You're going to get a lot of um, scriptural, biblical knowledge. And, you know, these ladies will point you in the right direction. So I really, I do encourage it to all the women whose husbands, especially the the women whose husbands are in the residential program, uh, because you are going to be hearing a lot of the same things he's hearing, you're going to be connecting with the same kind of teachings that he's getting. And it just, it helps you both to have a common ground that you're both standing on. Well, Kathy, you've shared a lot with us already today, but before we get to the end, I know there may just be some final things you'd share with someone who's heard everything you've said, but still is struggling with just feeling overwhelmed by where she finds herself at the moment. So what would you leave someone like that with? There are a few things. The first thing is, this did not take the Lord by surprise at all. He knew exactly who you were marrying and what would end up happening. He knew all about it. So he is sovereign. 
and he is in control. And you have to wrap your brain around that. You have to wrap your arms around that and really embrace that. So um, the other thing is trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Um, trust the Lord is is such a huge, huge thing. And a lot of the reason that so many wives are confused, despairing, losing it mentally is because they've gotten so... Um, away from the Lord, in a sense. I mean, I know a lot of us, I know this is what I was doing when I was young and I was going through, I was, I was losing my mind. I mean, that really is the way that it felt. I thought I was losing my mind because all I could think about was what was he doing? Who was he with? Where was he going? It was just, it consumed me. And um, I was backslidden. I was absolutely backslidden because I was so, so obsessed and so focused on Steve that I couldn't see the Lord anymore, even though I was calling him Lord. Um, And what God very, very sweetly did for me was helped me get my eyes off of Steve Gallagher and get my eyes on Jesus. And I just, I don't, (laughs) all I know to say to you ladies is that is where you need to have your focus out. That is the power that you need to go through what you're going through. And there is victory in it. I, I shared in um, our annual conference, I was sharing a bit of my testimony with the ladies and what God did for me. Um, and it was in the throes of sexual sin and Steve was just out of control. And God came to me and I came to God and I finally surrendered myself to him And I'm telling you, when I did that, when I finally threw up the white flag and took my hand off the control panel and said, Lord, this is yours. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I give up. I just want Jesus. When I did that, I had peace like I have never had it before. I had um, just such sweetness with the Lord. And I, I was still with Steve. We were living together. He was doing what he was doing. But I wasn't worried about it. I wasn't looking at it. I wasn't concerned about it. It was upsetting. There were times it was very upsetting because I knew what was going on. But there was just such a strength inside of me to not look at it. I was looking at Jesus. And that's what I want to encourage you ladies to do. Just keep pushing back on the fear. Keep pushing back on the temptation to look and to go figure out what he's doing and You just have to take your hands off of everything and trust the Lord to get you through this. He will give you the power and the grace to follow Jesus and to trust in him and to not live in this constant fear and obsession with what he's doing. Thanks for listening. You can find Purity for Life on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or just go to our website, purelifeministries.org slash podcast.